What's up everybody? This is Danny Reardon and we are back in the kitchen for another cooking video. Um, this is another plant-based, meatless, vegan, vegetarian dish for you guys. And this one is packed full of protein. Okay, so everybody out there, I know your main concern with protein um, in a vegetarian diet. Well, I'm about to teach you something awesome about seitan. The main ingredient in seitan is vital wheat gluten. Um, what's really exciting about this is that it actually has seven amino acids, but you can actually get the eighth one with this, nutritional yeast flakes. Um, and together, four ounces of this has almost 30 grams of protein. So be excited about that because that is almost the nutrition facts of chicken and turkey and beef. And it has very low fat, pretty much like a half a gram, and very low carbs, like four grams. Okay, so be excited about this. This is, this is a high protein, plant-based dish. So let's get started. Okay, so seitan is actually considered um, wheat meat of the vegetarian industry. Um, the texture is very similar to meat, and after it's done, done cooking here, you can slice it up like you would chicken or beef um, and saute it in a different kind of sauce or whatever you want. So first what we have to do is make a vegetable stock. You can actually buy vegetable stock. Uh, I would recommend low sodium because you do put a little bit of liquid aminos or soy sauce in there to flavor it because seitan really is like a blank slate. So you have to be creative with your spices and your flavors to make it taste really good um, or else it just kind of tastes like bread because it's from wheat gluten so it's kind of like bland. But I kind of like that. Anyway, we're going to start with the vegetable stock. So this is what we're going to use. The first time I made this I actually just used vegetable stock but I saw the mushroom stock there and I don't know, I feel like mushroom kind of has a good flavor. I don't really like mushrooms but I feel like this would be a good flavor to add in the broth. So what we're gonna do is, this is gonna go in the stock as well, this is liquid aminos, a little bit of sodium in here, but it's amino acids and it's not soy sauce, so the nutrition facts are actually a lot lower. So, this stuff is gonna go in the stock, and then since it's a stock and the seitan is actually gonna cook in there, simmer for about 30 to 45 minutes, I'm also gonna add some celery, some green peppers, some cut up onion, and some spices, oregano and rosemary. First we're going to start off with the vegetable stock. The first time I made um, seitan, I actually used two cups of vegetable stock, but this time I said I'm going to split it up in between the two. So I'm actually going to do a cup of vegetable stock, a cup of mushroom broth, and a cup of water. And a little side note, don't be afraid to add more water or more vegetable anything because you, you want the seitan to be completely covered when it's in here simmering. So I might have to add more than that. I'm going to do like a squirt. So correction, I actually did two cups of everything, and now we're gonna add two cups of water. Oh my God, ready to go. So this is a little bit of celery that I'm gonna add. Now I'm adding green peppers. There's really no rules with this stock or even when you make the dough because you can just season it with whatever you want. Um, so I picked celery because I know you do that with like turkey stock and chicken noodle soup and green peppers because Ian likes them and onion because I know that's gonna give it like a really nice flavor. And here I have some fresh rosemary and some fresh oregano that I'm gonna put in there to season it too. Last phase, onions. Man, I hope I don't cry. Cool. That's the vegetable stock. So next up, we're making the meat dough. We're gonna do two cups of vital wheat gluten. One, two. We're gonna do half a cup of the nutritional yeast flakes. And now in the actual seitan, I'm gonna put some crushed red pepper. All purpose seasoning because it's every purpose. Cumin. Some garlic powder. And some turmeric. Now the fun part. We're gonna take the same mushroom and vegetable stock and start adding it slowly to the dry ingredients. What you wanna be careful of is it getting too soggy. You wanna to try to keep it as dry as you can and like make it all mold and coagulate together. So be careful when you're adding this stuff. Um, it should be about a cup and then a little bit of soy sauce also. So just be wary of that. I'm gonna do a half a cup first. And then a half a cup of the vegetable stock. Now you stir it all together. So I just added another half a cup of vegetable stock just to see what happens because as you can see, one cup of everything is still too dry. I'm gonna add in another half cup of the mushroom broth. 
now I'm gonna use my hands. This part's fine. So just keep flipping it on itself until everything coagulates. So you kind of knead it and you know mush it around. And something that's really cool about seitan is that if you mess it up and put too much liquid in it, you can just add more vita weak gluten and you're fine. So you know it's kind of an easy dish to make once you learn how and um, I, I think everybody can do it. I think you should try it. And you can put whatever you want in the in the uh, in the dough here. Um, so some examples, you can make like a southwest kind. You can make like one that's like, try to be beef flavored. Uh, little meatballs, some Italian seasoning. The sky's the limit guys, this is like a blank slate. So really the thing is, you just kind of keep adding broth and adding weak gluten, you know, plus and minus until you get it to kind of a dough-like consistency. So once it's in that, see how it pulls apart? It's kind of hard to pull apart and you can see all the nice flavoring in there. So once you do this, um, split it into two pieces. Try to be as equal as you can so they cook evenly. And get your broth to a boil. Now we have our saitan balls. And we're gonna put it into our beautiful simmering broth that we have here. Put these puppies in there. I'm trying to make sure they're submerged. And uh, you'll notice as this is cooking, these kind of pop to the top and start to um, flip. And I would just kind of rotate them if you can. So now we bring it to a simmer, probably around a two. And then we leave it in here for about 30 to 45 minutes. And you can kind of poke it with a fork and see when it's firm. Um, you know, and this is one of those things where you can leave it in for shorter or longer, depending on how you actually like the consistency of it. But we're probably gonna go for about 45 minutes because I feel like we like things a little chewy and like done here, so. <laughs> Um, that's what we're gonna do. So wait on this. See you in 45. All right, guys. So this is about halfway through. Um, turning over this ATM and just make sure everything gets nice and coated in there. It's kind of like see, it's like I don't know what this is. Like like it's not even mushy. It's like doughy. Okay. So what is seitan? Like, where do you get the powder from? Um, it's actually made from wheat flour, and what they do is they wash it until the starch runs away, and then you're left with a, like this gelatinous mass that you cook. So they kind of wash all the starch off of the flour, and now you have gluten, the protein form of wheat. Now this is a gluten product, so I do want to mention that if you have celiac disease or any kind of gluten allergies, you probably should not eat this because it's all gluten. But if you don't, I highly recommend you try this because um, we actually were thinking of something the other day and I don't know how true all the gluten studies are out there as far as how bad gluten is for your health. Um, that's a whole nother video. But check out seitan. Be careful if you have gluten stuff. Seitan contains eight of the nine essential amino acids. The one that it's missing is lysine. But you can get that by adding nutritional yeast flakes. And actually, think about it this way. Every single bite of food that you eat doesn't have to be a complete source of protein. So if you're eating other things with lysine in them, like almonds, like legumes, like lentils, um, you're getting your daily protein, complete protein sources in. Uh, seitan also has more protein than tofu, tempeh, and I think it actually has more than like regular meat too, like chicken, beef, and turkey. Something about calcium. Um, so they did a study on calcium between meat eaters and plant eaters and they tested the bones and the strength and the structure of the bones were the same. So not only is this a super high protein source but with all the spices and the yeast flakes and everything else in it, it's actually really high in um, nutrients. Like all your other awesome daily nutrients that you probably don't get, seitan has them. So seitan is like a superstar. Different ways to make seitan. So this Today we simmered it or boiled it. Um, you can bake it, you can fry it. Those are the two that I've seen. You can steam it. Um, and you can add it to things like, you can ground it up and make it chili, or tacos, or sloppy joes, or I've actually read something about ham. You can make ham. I haven't figured out how to do it, but it even looked like ham. It was kind of brown on the outside and then it was sliced up nice. A um, Couple different flavor things that you guys could try. There's like a lemongrass one that you can make. Um, you could do an Asian style dish like a teriyaki stir fry. You could do barbecue, you could do buffalo. Okay, that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right, everybody. I think the seitan's done. 
So it's been a little under an hour, um, and we have two big balls of protein here. So what you do is you take it out of the stock. I know it doesn't look pretty. Let's just get that out of the way. It's pretty ugly. Um, however, now you have a blank slate of a really high protein source. Nutrient dense protein source. I realize it's ugly. Here is like a plain grilled chicken breast. So you can do a bunch of stuff with it. You can eat it like this. You can salt and pepper it just like this. But tonight I'm gonna finish off Ian's meal with some barbecue seitan and I'm actually gonna put it with um, we have garbanzo, beans, lentils, and tomatoes in here, all natural. And I'm gonna put it with some rice, some jasmine rice. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the inside. And I was reading, and you can make this as firm or as spongy or soggy as you want. So you kinda just have to play with it and learn how to use it and cook with it. Like I said before, you can cut it up however you want. You could slice it like this, you could cube it, you could crumble it. Really, it's just whatever you want to do. This would be gross if it was meat. But it's actually not gross because it's not meat. So think about this like not being meat now. And you're like, oh, I don't know. It's normal. And you can kind of see all the spices that I put in there from before. I can see some turmeric in here. I can see some red pepper and some regular pepper. And can't wait to try this thing. I'm adding a little bit of coconut oil so we can put the seitan in it. Now it's time to fry up the seitan. This is gonna actually be two meals for Ian. Um, so we have two big loaves here and it, it makes four meals total. Okay, cook up a little bit more. I'm gonna make sure this gets a little crispy. Ooh, look at that, crispy. Yeah, that looks good. This is Rufus Teague barbecue sauce. Um, this is like real barbecue sauce with like real sugar in it and it doesn't have high fructose corn syrup. So when you're looking for barbecue sauces, look to see if it has high fructose corn syrup because that's really, really, really not good for you. Like, further than me probably. So Rubus tea. I'm gonna just this. Okay, that's done Okay, so I'm combining our bean mixture with the white rice. I'm gonna put a little bit of coconut oil in here so nothing sticks. And this is actually gonna make two meals. So we're gonna stir it up. See, look at these beans. Oh my goodness. And see, these beans actually contain the lysine that the seitan is missing. So we are good to go. Nice mix, right? Oh my goodness. This looks really good. So I separated everything, so now I'm gonna use just divide this up into two portions, and we are finito. Oh my gosh, look at this. One meal for tonight, and one meal done for tomorrow. Bada bing, bada boom, protein. Well everybody, we are finished. We have one meal for tomorrow and one meal for tonight, and all together, we made barbecue seitan and rice and a bean mixture. So this is it all finished. Isn't it beautiful and plant-based? Oh, and actually look forward to more cooking videos because cooking is something that I really love to do and this new adventure of plant-based food has been super exciting for me um, and I feel really good about it. Earlier today we went shopping to Lucky's and we went and bought like a bunch of stuff and we recorded the whole thing. So I take you shopping with me on a plant-based diet and kind of show you guys like what's around the grocery store to get because I think a lot of people just need to be more aware of it. Oh, and I wore my Redcon One shirt today. My new Redcon One shirt. Thank you guys, by the way. I'm a new sponsored athlete. Yay! Um, and it says we are one. So I wore this today because I'm, today was kind of like a plant vibe day and um, we're all one. So on that note, peace out everybody. Eat up. Don't lose gains. Good vibes. Red vibes. Plant vibes. A cup of vegetable stock, a cup of mus mushroom broth. Let me check that. So let's get started. Plants. Wait, Ugh, I kinda wanna start over. Okay. Okay. Um, we're back in the kitchen making another ple- It looks like, no. Hi.
today have fun facts about Satan. Now, I am not a vegetarian or a vegan yet. I have eight weeks to finish out this Olympia prep, but it's something that's coming in the very near future. And a problem or something that, that I've seen that's lacking with the vegan vegetarian community is information to the meat eaters and the people who are just unaware. I have fun facts about Satan for you. Okay. First of all, it's been around for thousands of years. It was created by the Buddhist monks over in like Korea and China and India and all that thousands of years ago um, because they didn't want to eat animals anymore. So they created um, the substitute for meat and it was called Satan. I'm just creating awareness. I'm not pushing it on you. Like you don't need to go vegan or vegetarian for me to like you. I'm going to like you anyways. But I think it would be a great for the planet and the animals and us. So I'm going to learn some more and I'm going to teach you guys as much as I can. I'll help broke loose. <laughs> we actually just went shopping earlier today and got a bunch of plant-based... Can I start the end over? 